My name is Sue Magner, I'm the North Reading Veterans Director, and I want to welcome everybody here for my 10th annual dinner social. We have a busy, busy evening this evening. So right off the bat, I'd like to just kind of acknowledge, first of all, that our junior ROTC Marine Corps cadets are running a 15th annual trophy raffle. Um, it looks like the prizes are pretty darn good. Five dollars a chance, um, it's a thousand dollars for the top prize, and the fifth prize is a hundred, so it's a thousand, five hundred, two fifty, one fifty, and a hundred. So the kids will be around, they're all obviously in uniform, so it's not hard to find them. Raise your hands, guys. The drawing will be on the 28th of November. All they need is your name and number. You do not have to be present. And for me, I think I'm speaking for everyone here on behalf of everyone here. I personally, and I think everybody is in agreement with this, we would like to thank Mark Ginsburg for his generous generosity in providing us with an amazing venue, a spectacular venue, and providing all these meals. I would also like to thank Melissa Funholz, Director of Sales and Events, for working diligently with me arranging and coordinating the evening's events. I want to thank Jamie Ferguson, she's the manager of sales and events here, and the Tewksbury Country Club staff, our amazing bartenders. And you will be provided with a scrumptious dinner, I guarantee. So if everybody notices on your tables, there are what we call tip jars, okay? And I'm asking you to all take the time and put some money in those tip jars and tip the wait staff because, you know, when we're doing these venues and we are paying for the meals or you're paying for your meal, your duty is typically included in that. So let's take good care of all of them and uh, make sure we take care of all, all of them properly. In addition, I would like to take this time to thank Brad Bizzotti, who is our DJ up there. <laughs> providing you with this amazing music. I would like to thank Captain Castanetti, who could not be here this evening. So I still want to thank him for his service and thank him for always being here for the Missing Man Table Ceremony, which is unforgettable. With that being said, Sergeant Major Ken Oswald and the Marine Corps Junior ROTC Cadets will be providing us with that piece of, I don't want to call it entertainment, but this piece of sombering um, presentation that you, um, if none of you have seen it before live, you're going to be in for a real treat. They obviously run an outstanding program with these cadets who have been champions for how many years? National champions? Sergeant Major. How many years have they been uh, national champions? Four times national champions. They're an absolute treat. I want to thank the United States Marine Color Guard. 25th Marine Regiment out of Fort Devens, who have been here now 10 years for us. Our singer, Carolyn Mullen, who will be singing the national anthem for us. Dave Doucette and Norcam for always filming all my events. And I would like to thank Larry Rooney, Maureen Stevens, Diane Kroll, Amy Quinty, Jody Schaefer, Andrea Swenson, 
Jenny Laudnori, Nora Suega, and Kathy Walsh, and also Irene Yule for helping out setting up this place and manning tables out in front. I would like to honor, recognize our honored guest speaker, who is the first woman ever to command the Mass Air National Guard. And that would be Command Chief Michelle O'Keefe. In the interim, I'm expecting Mark, uh, Brigadier General Mark Berlino, as well as Senator Bruce Starr and Representative Brad Jones of North Reading. I would like to acknowledge our select board member, Leanne Gonzalez. And my town administrator, Michael Gilberto. <laughs> Reverend Rachel Fisher, who will be giving us the blessing. <laughs> and Jeff Yule, who is the North Reading Republican Town Committee member. I would personally like to recognize all the veterans and warriors who have joined us this evening. To all of you who have served this great nation, it is an honor, an absolute honor, to be present here with you for this annual dinner. We thank you so much for your service and sacrifice. Could I have all our veterans, if you have the ability to please stand, if you can't, raise your hand, so please stand and get recognized. Last cool. 
He can all remain standing while 25th Regiment retires our colors. And then Junior ROTC Marine Corps Cadets of the Lynn English Academy. <laughs> to perform the Miss Community Table Ceremony.
so that your children could remain free. Remember, the lone candle symbolizes the frailty of the prisoner alone trying to stand up against his oppressors. Remember. The black ribbon on the candle reminds us of those who will not be coming home. Remember. The single rose reminds us of the loved ones and the families of our comrades in arms who keep the faith and await their return. Remember. A slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate. If we do not bring them home, remember. There is salt on the plate, symbolic of the family's tears as they wait and remember. The glasses are inverted. They cannot toast with us tonight, maybe tomorrow, if we remember. The red, white, and blue ribbon is tied to the flower base by a yellow ribbon that was worn by thousands who awaited their return. Remember. The faded picture on the table is a reminder that they are missed very much and are remembered by their families. Remember. As you look upon this empty table, do not remember ghosts from the past. Remember our comrades. Remember those whom we depend on in battle. They depend on us to bring them home. Remember our friends, they are the ones we love and love life and freedom as we do. They will remember what we do. Please honor and remember them. As Cadet De Leon extinguishes this candle, let us transfer its flame to our hearts and remember.
At this time, I would like to call up Reverend Rachel Fisher to deliver the blessing. Let us pray. Lord God, our hearts are full. Thank you for this time and this space, this remembrance and acknowledgement of the very best characteristics that you have given to us. God, we see this beautiful room with the lovely dishes and glassware and lovely clothes and white tablecloths. And we know that it stands in sharp contrast to the realities of the service of our veterans, especially those who've seen combat. God, we ask that you would use this time to refresh our veterans and their families to thank them, to help them to feel appreciated, that our conversations would be full of stories and gratitude, and that you would send us away from this place so proud of this nation to which you have given so many blessings. God bless the food, bless the hands who have prepared it, bless all those who have put together this event. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> While they are getting ready to serve you folks, um, just want to let you know, uh, first of all, if you look under your bread and butter plate there, somebody has a ticket that says winner on it. And whoever has the ticket winner wins the centerpiece. Number 
Because we had the four oldest units, I was a battalion commander, one of those units, 101st Engineer Battalion. And it, it's quite an honor. We have the first battle streamers, Lexington and Boston, that we carry in our battle streamers. And we get to serve our country both here in the state as well as overseas. I've served with my battle buddy over here, Amy, uh, in Afghanistan back in 2011 and 12, but also as the task force commander at the Boston Marathon Bombing. So we have that fortune to uh, So I'd like to uh, start off first by handing out some points for our veterans, because that's what we're here to do, to celebrate. Do we actually have any World War II veterans in the audience? Probably not. Probably not. But uh, let's go Korea. Do we have any Korean veterans in the audience? If you can stand up, please. Stand up. Let's give a round of applause. So I'm just going to ask you a question, gentlemen. I don't know who served the longest. Uh, how many years did you serve, sir? Two years? That's been back then. Two? How many years you served back there? Four? Okay, four years. So he wins the coin for serving the longest, but I, if I had a coin to give it all, I'd give it all back. We do have a 
of World War II veterans. And so, actually, I'll come over to uh, over here at this table. Sir, the greatest generation of all time. Greatest generation, Ronald Reagan, actually wrote before he passed away. Uh, this is from Ronald Reagan. We celebrate Veterans Day on the anniversary of the Armistice Day that ended World War I. The Armistice that began on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. The timing of this holiday is quite deliberate in terms of historical fact, but somehow it always seems quite fitting to me that this day comes deep in autumn when the colors are muted, when the days seem to invite contemplation. It is in a way an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. Imagination plays tricks as we see these soldiers in our minds as old and wise. Most of them were boys and girls when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands, wives, father, fathers, mothers, grandfathers, and grandmothers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men and women. They gave up everything for our country, for us. And all we can do is remember. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. The memory of those who gave the last full measure of devotion made our efforts to achieve lasting peace, gain strength. Let us make a vow to our dead. Let us show them by our actions that we understand what they died for. Strengthened by their courage, heartened by their value, and born of their memory. Let us continue to stand for the ideals for which they lived and died. Ronald Reagan. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your service. 
I'd like to leave you with a poem titled Final Inspection. It was written by Sergeant Joshua Helton Brown. The soldier stood and faced God, which must always come to pass. He hoped his shoes were shining just as brightly as his brass. Step forward now, you soldier. How shall I deal with you? Have you always turned the other cheek to my church? Have you been true? The soldier squared his shoulders and said, No, Lord, I guess I ain't, because those of us who carry guns can't always be a saint. I've had to work most Sundays, and at times my talk was tough. And sometimes I've been violent because the world is awfully rough. But I never took a penny that wasn't mine to keep, though I worked a lot of overtime when the bills got just too steep. And I never passed a cry for help, though at times I shook with fear. And sometimes, God forgive me, I've wept on manly tears. I know I don't deserve a place among the people here. They've never wanted me around except to calm my fears. If you have a place for me here, Lord, it needn't be so grand. I've never expected or had too much. But if you don't, I'll understand. There was a silence all around the throne where the saints had often trod, as the soldier waited quietly for the judgment of his God. Step forward now, you soldier. You've borne your burdens well. Walk peacefully on heaven's streets. You've done your time in hell. Thank you, Leo. At this time, I'd like to call up Representative Brad Jones.
very small in the day over here. <laughs> Thank you, this wasn't necessary or unexpected. <clears throat> we enjoy doing these type of things for all the veterans. My son right now is in Kuwait for nine months in the Army. So um, it's highly nice to see all you guys out here and uh, all you do. So um, we just want to give back to you for uh, what you've done for us. So thank you very much. Whether it is a handshake and a robust thank you, 
or an embrace, or bringing someone a meal, or knocking on a door of a veteran that may be alone and just needs to know that somebody else out there is thinking about them. There is a role for all of us. And that's why it's an honor to be here with my legislative colleagues and with Susan, Mark, to be able to say thank you for being that example of what we should all be about and say thank you for what you have done in so many ways and for being an inspiration and being a shining beacon in a society that sometimes is chaotic and sometimes is divisive and sometimes is confused. There is no confusion about what we should do and what is morally right when we are led by your example. So Mark, congratulations and thank you for everything you mean to all of us, and most importantly today, the men and women that have served and continue to serve our country.
between businesses, representatives, BMWs, legions, right? Knights of Columbus's throughout the whole entire state because this event was for the whole entire state as well as a good chunk of the New England area. So Senator Carr got it on the uh, last minute on the budget for the FY20 and we were able to get $10,000 to cover the cost of the wall. So, Senator Tarr, Senator Bruce Tarr, 11 November 2019, in recognition of your support of veterans, warriors, and their families throughout the Commonwealth, your dedication and assistance to veterans has changed many lives. With grateful hearts, we thank you. These guys are all great. I know you got some tough things to do, but I know you're going to do it. You had a great mentor. All right, I got one more. And he's going to have to come down the stairs for this one. So for the last four years, our DJ, Brad Bazzotti, who's up in the rafters up there, has been taking care of us for all our music and donating his time. He also showed up on the slide for me for the, the event for the Wall and Heels and pumped up the music and the sound system for us. Brad, you get a minute? Can you come downstairs? So he's been supplying us with this fabulous music. I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying it. And by the way, he does take um, requests. Very, very privileged 
uh, in North Reading to have her as our PSO uh, and to have uh, put together such a wonderful event for the Wall Heels. Uh, and she just does a wonderful job uh, year in and year out, but, but 2019 was a banner year. So I have a citation for Susan that I'd like to give to her. Uh, be hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers serious congratulations to Susan Beckman in recognition of being named the Massachusetts Veteran Services Officer of the Year. And the entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors given this 11th day uh, of November 2019. Congratulations, Susan. Thank you, Susan Magna, for her dedication to our veterans. 
Williams and for all her hard work in organizing tonight's event. It means a lot to every veteran in this room to come together as a community and to come together as a family to honor and support each other. I'd like to also congratulate Susan on being named Massachusetts Veteran Service Officer of the Year. I play a dual role, actually, at the Joint Force Headquarters. I'm also the Director of Personnel Actions at the State Headquarters for the Air National Guard. So I received many phone calls from veterans having trouble reaching their VA representatives. And I personally experienced this with my dad. I had been encouraging him to file a claim with the VA for his multiple symptoms related to Agent Orange. He eventually had put his pride aside after many years of suffering, and he had reached out to his local VA representative. He called and left several messages and never received a call back. So Susan probably doesn't remember this because I wasn't the command chief at the time. And I reached out to her for some advice. This was many years ago. And although she couldn't take the case on herself, um, and neither could I because you have to go through the VA rep that represents you in town. Susan reached out to his VA rep and ensured that my father got a return phone call. He is now receiving the care that he needs, but more importantly, the care that he deserves. Our community is very fortunate to have Susan, and I am thankful for all she does for our veterans. So once again, welcome. why we are all gathered here tonight, I immediately think about community and family. Fewer than 10% of Americans can claim the title veteran, and less than 1% of our population is currently serving in defending our freedoms. Veterans have given us freedom and security, but the support of each veteran extends far beyond those percentages. None of this would be possible without the support of our neighbors, parents, siblings, children, and friends. For many of us, protecting our nation's way of life was important enough to endure long separations from our families, miss the births of children, freeze in sub-zero temperatures, bake in the deserts, lose limbs, and far too often lose lives. It's important for our veterans to come together and to honor each other, to share stories and memories from their time served. But oftentimes, we find our tell ourselves telling stories and feel that no one really understands unless they've been through it themselves. You know, I remember coming home from my time served in the desert, and we landed in Florida and stayed overnight until we could fly back to Boston the next day. And I couldn't believe the colors, the trees, the grass, the buildings, the people, the clothes they were wearing. It was all so strange to me. For months, all I had seen was desert brown. The sand, our uniforms, our tents, the buildings, everything was desert brown. And then I remember going out to dinner that night and I was looking around at all the people who were laughing, they were smiling, going about their daily lives, having no idea what our soldiers and airmen were sacrificing on the battlefield at that very moment. It was a hard adjustment for me, and I remember being mad at first, just looking around, just thinking, how are these people so happy? And then I realized that that was our purpose. That our job was to ensure that Americans could go about their daily lives with freedom and security. We are a unique group.
group of people who have the ability to form together as a family and to look out for one another. No matter the circumstance, whether it was in basic training, technical school, the NCO Academy, deployments, my time spent at the wing, at the Joint Force Headquarters, or my time spent with you here tonight. You are all family, and I am grateful to all the veterans who came before me and provided me the opportunity to serve our great nation. Today we salute the service of all veterans, and we keep in our thoughts and our prayers the fallen, the missing, and those who are currently serving in harm's way. I want to thank you for a great evening, and I am honored to be here with you tonight with each and every one of you. God bless America. I have to maintain a passing grade in every class. They have been very fortunate to go to Dallas, Texas, Mexico, New York. Yes, there is a place called Mexico, New York. Daytona Beach, Florida, Washington, D.C. In a few minutes, you're going to see the boys perform, and then after the boys are done, the girls perform. Gentlemen, remember the sensor so we don't set off the fire alarms. So, the dead executive officer, your show will begin.
Oh, 